G'day, mate, and welcome to Capital Industry with me, Jiddy. So, one of the things that I found during my playthrough of Capital Industry is, well, you had to rebuild things quite often. You had to rebuild things as new technology came up, new, new things were learned, not only about the game, but in the game. But I found one thing that really frustrated me, and that was rebuilding my spelter race. Now, it wasn't because... I unlocked some brand new technology and therefore mm, I superseded what I had previously. It was mainly due to lack of design, lack of design etiquette to make sure I built something that was upgradable. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to go right back to square one. I'm going to go back to square one and I'm going to redesign my smelters from the very first smelter all the way through the very late smelter to make sure that they're upgradable in place. And that's what today's video is about. And I thought, you know, I like these designs so much. I thought you might like them too, so hence we have this video, and hence I'm going to ask, can I borrow a like? I'd like to borrow a like at this point of the video, because by all means, later on in the video, I'll remind you guys, if you weren't happy with the video, you can have your like back, but in the meantime, I'd just like to borrow it. At the same time, I will mention down in the comments below, there is a pinned comment with a Captain Ministry tutorial list, should you want more tutorials on everything from, well, nuclear to water to, well, well, everything, everything. Diesel, if I've missed something. Oh, farms, farms. We've got one on farms too. Microchips, it's, it's all down there. If I've missed something, by all means, hit me up on Twitter or jump across on Discord and send me a DM. If, if I miss something, I'm, I'm happy to look up and, uh, and do a video on it. At the same time, I will mention there is down the bottom, there is chapters. Should you need to come back, rewatch one of these videos to work out exactly how I did something, what the spacing was, by all means, there's a, there's a helpful little chapter list for you to jump through to get you to the right section. Anyway, with that out of the way, I think we need to start with our very first smelter, which, well, we should start from scratch. So let's go delete and remove the whole thing. Um, I will want a blast furnace and I will want a metal caster. Oh look, tutorial, how to do iron smelting. It's exactly what we're talking about today. All right, so uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a blast furnace. Now, I'm gonna be building inside one of these squares and the main reason is, is for those those of you at home who like to count tiles, who like to count tiles, who like to have a grid to reference from, uh, we're going to be building inside one of these squares. Now, you don't have to build inside one of these squares because I'm going to be referencing everything off the very first blast furnace I put down, which is going to be this one. Uh, the important things I need to mention is we're going to have slag on the outside because that's going to come in become important later but with the first one done i need to put one beside it i do need to leave a one tile gap and i need to make sure that slags on the outside as well so we're not going to rotate it because that does nothing but if i press f it'll flip it stupid truck bad truck bad truck cool now you get to pick up the parts wrong buttons bad truck okay we're going to uh, put another one beside it, okay? Uh, we need a one tile gap in the middle. Next up, we're gonna need uh, that caster that I was just mentioning that the bad truck went and built, and I need to come out one, two, or three tiles. At the same time, we'll, we'll notice that I'm also uh, directly level with the left-hand side. Well, the outside, the outside, yes. Uh, also one tile off the edge if you prefer to count off the edge, but I didn't have one of these. Uh, we actually need two of these because you output 24 molten iron and you only process 12 molten iron per caster. So obviously it's a one to two ratio. At the same time, uh, we're gonna put down two on the other side, which I'm gonna flip again. And I wanna leave a three tile gap in the middle. We went from a one tile gap between the two furnaces to a three tile gap uh, between the casters. Okay, with that done, we're gonna throw in some smokestacks because that is the best way to deal with the exhaust. A smokestack each because it's not worth routing the pipes. And finally, we're gonna need a molten channel. Molten channel needs to come forward, run it into the caster, and then run around and connect uh, at, whoop. Uh, please get down and plug in there. And then from that uh, connection point onto the next one, that is gonna be our very first smelter, our very first smelter, our very first baby smelter, which will have the trucks auto import, uh, either iron ore and coal or iron scrap and coal. If you're still pulling down the original um, what is it as a radar tower what, whatever it, whatever's there at the start of the game that you need to dismantle to gain some construction parts and some iron scrap to get your settlement up and running yes yes uh we're going to be processing both of those um you probably want 
Honestly, I actually think you want the priority of iron ore first because the scrap runs out eventually. But, you know, it's a preference thing. Anyway, that's going to be our first two smelters. Okay, very, very simple. Gets us up and running and that'll get us into early game. Now, I do want to mention this costs 268 construction parts, which is an awful lot for early game. You probably don't want to build these both at once, but... You're going to want two at least, and this should be enough to get you through a good portion of the game with just two smelters. Now, obviously, after we get our very first two smelters, we're going to start doing research. We're going to learn new things. One of the new things we're going to learn fairly quickly is conveyor belts. So I want to make a new build involving conveyor belts, which means we're going to take the existing build, which uh, we're just going to rebuild, and then we need to come around to the rear, and then we need to uh, start uh, adding some conveyor belts, which means we're going to come into transportation, I'm going to go with a U-shaped conveyor. We're going to come out from the back of the machine, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm going to build the first belt all the way along the back. Okay, that's going to be for iron ore. Next belt I'm going to need is for coal, which I need, it means I need to come up a tile with the E button, and then I build that over the top. Now, as we can see, the belts like sticking to one another. The good news is they stick to another, one another with magnets. If I press the R button, they stop sticking to one another. So we're going to bring the second build uh, belt over the top at height one and plug that to there. Now, the third thing I need to deal with with belts is going to be slag, which you would assume I would deal with on height two. You'd be wrong. It's very important. We're going to deal with this on height three. Height three means we're going to come over the top and I'm going to drag that over to there as well. All right. With that done, I need to plug in iron ore into both uh, uh, both furnaces. Yep. Connect. Thank you. Please connect. Thank you. And then I'm going to uh, hook in the coal as well. Okay. That's iron and coal de dealt with. Next up is the slag. Slag, we're going to come from slag output from the primary machine, the first machine. We're going to come uh, over one tile and back one tile and then click. After we've done that, we're going to come up to height number three. It's going to be important. We're not going to connect. We're going to stop one tile short. Well, we're going to stop hard up against the main set of belts. And then I'm actually going to step over. Please stop it. There we go. Over before I connect. Okay, it doesn't like doing things straight. Straight from above. Uh, but it means that I have a little zigzag here at the end. The zigzag is going to become important later. Okay, with that done, we're going to do the exact same here. We're going to come out back and click. And then up to height three. And one tile short. And then hook that in as well. So with that done, that should be our iron ore in. Our coal in. And our slag out. Okay. Well, on the front end, we're going to need a couple of things. One is going to be a storage, which we'll just leave there for right now. And I need to bring the belts out. So we're going to bring a belt out of the front one. And whoa, let's try that again. Belt out of the front one, and then a belt out of the rear one. And we're going to hook it into the front one. Uh, same story, front and rear. Now, you have two choices here. You can either build these belts, or you can remove these belts take your box and plug your box straight into those connectors. Connectors are a magical thing. Uh, they have a ridiculously high throughput. Uh, they have a high a throughput of about a thousand items per minute, which means if I directly connect that box, things are almost going to teleport from the machine into the connector into the box, which sort of suits me 100%. Uh, and we're going to build that. Okay, so that should be our well our output handle and our input handle. Now, one of the reasons we put these silly little squiggles at the rear means if I copy that uh, and I copy the whole smelter, we might notice that I could put a, well, if I didn't over the build the belts, let's just remove you guys so you yep yep yeah, yeah, and just remove that yep yeah, okay uh and let's just copy half because i need to talk about a half all right uh it means that because i don't have a connector hard up against the edge of the build i can take another build and drop it right beside which means if you want to build these in series which you're probably going to want to do you now don't need to intentionally leave a gap between two smelters you can just tag one two three four five uh very quickly one on top of one another all right with that done we're going to obviously plug in our iron ore plus plug in our coal and that should be the build up and running now obviously you should deal with your slag you should probably throw down a storage container like, I don't know, so, and take your slag and just jam it. Yeah, jam it there and build. Helps if I build that too. Uh, set this to slag. 
and tell the trucks to definitely empty it and throw it in the seat. But that should be your next build up and running. So this is nothing, just 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 bare basic. We're, we're on the island, we're surviving into belt technology. So we've made it to that second step. From there, we go back in the tech tree. We get another upgrade not too far in the future, which is gonna be recycling, which means I need to take the exact same build and I now need to incorporate recycling into the mix. So, uh, yoink. We are going to build the exact same build as we had previously, uh, which is also going to need to have iron ore plugged in, and it's going to have to have coal plugged in. And all I need to do to enable recycling is one, build a recycling center, two, pull out the iron scrap, and then three is come into transports. We're going to take a U-shaped balancer. I'm going to put it on the iron ore line and plug in my recyclables. Okay, my iron scrap rather and also connect that back in to the main iron ore line. Now, the only other thing I need to do is I need to come to this guy and I need to make sure you are pri oh, priority in from the iron scrap, which means as the belts come along, we're gonna see iron scrap comes in, coal also come in as well. And these guys, we just need to enable the iron scrap recipe. That's all you need to do. You don't need to worry about prioritizing because we're prioritizing at the actual balancer and making sure the iron scrap goes in first. And as we can see, well, you. Uh, iron scrap is not the primary recipe, but it's the one running. But why? Because as they're being fed by belts, it means they're going to get whatever the priority is on the belt, which back to our balancer is iron scrap. So they're just going to run through all the iron scrap first uh, or iron ore or whatever it happens to be in the order it comes into the machines. As we can see, they have a whole bunch of buffers here and uh, perfect example. So we're currently processing this recipe. We have green bars here, here, here and here, which all indicate that they have enough coal to run this recipe right now. But they don't have enough iron ore to run this recipe. Hence, this has a gray bar that's still filling up slowly. And oh, the iron scrap's filling up right now. And you have enough to run both. You're going to technically run this one. But then you have to run this one next. Because, well, you have to run it next. It doesn't have enough iron ore to repeat running the iron ore recipe. Same applies over here. Right, it has enough to run this recipe, it's going to run this recipe, and then that'll clear enough room on the belt that it can now run this recipe and vice versa. It'll swap across according to what you feed in. If you're feeding in nothing but recyclables, it's going to be running nothing but recyclables. But that is our second build up and done. Now, from there, back in the research tree, we get access to a couple of technologies fairly close together. Uh, one is going to be exhaust filtration. The other one is going to be advanced smelting. Advanced smelting is going to give you the blast furnace 2 along with the metal caster 2. We're going to talk about this one first and the exhaust scrubber second. Okay, so for that one, we need uh, the exact same build without that belt. Oop, that belt or that belt. Yep, sorry. I uh, left in some of the stuff from design feature and designing and we also need to make sure we're bringing in our recyclables and actually can I upgrade one of you let's just upgrade one and we'll upgrade the metal caster as well and we'll upgrade you as well again I want to make sure I have a build that I can just upgrade in place that's very very important I don't want to have to come through and redesign and retweak something like to add in recyclables I had to remove two belts and put in a balancer. Had I been wise, I could have put a balancer in a long time ago, but the fact that I removed two belts, it's inconsequential. All right, so uh, with the new Blast Furnace Mark II compared to the Blast Furnace Mark I, one, one thing you might notice is, uh, this is the friend that she, he, he, this is the one your partner just says is just a friend. He's just a friend. He's just a friend. It's fine. Yes. Uh, so little one processes 24 molten iron for 24 iron ore and nine coal, also 24 exhaust for 12 slag important numbers the new guy uh 36 exhaust so a little bit more efficient on the exhaust uh actually yeah we're just going to talk about this recipe uh 18 slag compared to 12 slag so again a little bit more efficient because we're now getting out 48 molten iron so it's going to process twice as much also 15 coal compared to 9 coal so again more efficient uh but one thing you might notice is we're no longer processing iron ore we're now doing iron ore crush and limestone which we're now down to 36 plus 3 to get 48. So it's much more efficient. This is why you generally go for this upgrade before you get to the exhaust scrubber. But we'll cover the exhaust scrubber in a second, which also means you need to have a whole army of crushers um, while crushing all your iron ore. So it's a it's a bit of a change to the process. But 
Same story, we need a balancer to balance out our uh, iron scrap versus our iron, iron ore crushed, iron ore crushed, yes, uh, which we would then plug straight to there as is. Uh, we'd also bring in our coal and plug that straight in there. Now that leaves our third ingredient now being limestone. Uh, which we're going to plug in, obviously, you would assume, in that height number two belt, uh, like so. So we're going to plug that straight in there, which means I need to grab that and plug that in there, uh, which is on the outside, closest to the slag. Also, it would end up being right there, should that one be upgraded. Also, this is why we have that uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. We started everything six tiles back to make sure that when we get to the point of being able to add limestone, we can just add in the belt. And I don't have to move the whole belt stack back by a couple of tiles because, well, I've had to do that previously and it was not fun. It was not fun. It was not fun. But uh, it means we can just add limestone to the mix and... Yeah, just build everything. Build everything, please. Add limestone to the mix, and that is that upgraded. So obviously, again, if I just upgrade, upgrade, and upgrade, we can see, well, the first one is going to kick in... Ah, enable the recipe. Enable the recipe probably helps. Uh, first one's going to kick in straight away, and it'll start outputting. Yep. And the second one is literally waiting for the upgrade to finish that belt to turn on you will start processing if i give you the other recipe and you should also be good to go and again we're going to have the metal casters now do 24 a piece which means our belt is moving 24 iron off the first one 24 iron off the second one even if you didn't go direct connector and you want to have a belt in there it means that belt's now moving yeah 48 the other one's moving 48 go into a storage from a storage you can run a faster belt out should you want to uh but that is our next upgrade in and done so from there back in the tech tree we get access to the exhaust scrubber the exhaust filtration which is definitely worth doing because currently we are processing uh well we're outputting 30 or 36 exhaust uh, and that's giving us, well, half that amount of air pollution. It's about 15 air pollution. The exhaust scrubber processes 180 exhaust plus some water. So it's requiring you to have, lose some water in the process, but it's also going to give you sulfur. It's going to give you a bunch of carbon dioxide, which in theory you could do something with. Currently you can't, but... In theory, you can do something with it later in the game, definitely. Uh, also going to give you some low-pressure steam and some uh, cuts the air pollution down to 24. Now, if you're not processing the carbon dioxide, uh, where are we? Uh, it's still going to dump out mm, about half as much. So you're going to end up cutting from... Uh, each one of these is outputting 15 air pollution currently when you go over to exhaust scrubbing you're going to have five of these outputting 15 plus another 72 co2 which is another 20 so you're going to do about 44 air pollution compared to two of these doing 30 a piece and five of these would do 44 whatever i said it was so yeah a worthwhile upgrade if you want to cut down your air pollution and therefore have happier people well healthier people i don't guarantee they'll be happier but healthier so we need to build the exact same build the exact same build as we've had previously the only thing i want to do is i don't want to have smoke stacks in the front so we're going to remove both those uh i do need to have all my inputs so we're going to plug you in there we're going to plug in the coal next which will go there and the limestone cool uh, that is that half of the build done. All right, obviously we're going to need an exhaust scrubber. Exhaust scrubber has a couple of things we need to deal with. One is going to be the exhaust. Two is going to be the water. Uh, in my case for right now, for demonstration purposes only, well, or because this is what you choose to do, is I'm going to run my steam into a cooling tower and back into there and run my water into there. Okay, and you're going to prioritize the, the, the steam that we've cooled down back into water, back into the system. On top of that, I need to make sure I have a bucket for the sulfur, which we're just going to go storage, sulfur, bop, done. And yep, and like I said before, trucks can reach anything within about three tiles. So you can come park over here and reach through the belts if they wanted to, to pull out the sulfur, don't ask. And then that leaves here where I need to bring out my exhaust and my CO2, which means 
I want to have a smokestack. Uh, a smokestack processes 60 carbon dioxide, except I need to remove more than 60. I need to rem remove 72, which means I'm going to have two of those guys plugged in a connector, which I'm going to plug in like that. And as I said before, connectors process about a thousand times per, per minute. We're only moving through 72, but it means I can have two little smokestacks and we have a nice little build here, which is going to be our exhaust scrubber. Now, obviously these guys are going to complain because they have nowhere to dump their exhaust. We are going to fix that up by mentioning once again, these are doing 36 exhausts. So you're going to need a pipe mark two. I'm going to run this over the top, hard up against the machines at height number one. After we get that there, we're going to take that over the exhaust scrubber and build that pipe in. The only thing I need to do is I need to plug these machines into that new exhaust pipe, which means we're going to come from the machine up and to left tile, and well, up and away from the middle of tile. That's what I, well, that's probably more accurate. And plug those two together. With that done, it means you guys can dump your exhaust into this main pipe. It can come across here. It can run the exhaust scrubber, and we can have a very very happy day. Everybody's going to be. Uh, going to be pleased we're going to have some iron ore come out and we're going to have a cleaner atmosphere cleaner atmosphere is definitely a bonus but uh you guys you process 180 exhaust and you guys produce 36 a piece which means you can chain about five of these together which means hopefully you've been building everything to the right length all along which means you should be able to copy from there uh no, that's one tile too many uh, it's fine, we should be able to copy from there to there, all the way out to the front. And I should be able to take a whole build and stamp it right beside the previous build. And it would just clip together like Lego, which is what I really like. And this is why we can tandem these or, yeah, build these in series over and over and over uh, until we have enough smelting to hopefully satisfy the factory beast. All right, with that done, uh, we are going to move on to the next one, which requires, well, another lot of belts, another lot of belts. And actually, let's let's build the next one first. Okay, so the next one is going to be the exact same build as we've just built with the exhaust scrubbing already built in because we've already done exhaust scrubbing and plug that in there. But it's going to be another layer of technology. Another layer of technology much later in the game, you get access to Arc Furnace 2. Arc Furnace 2, which requires, well, a slight change up to the recipe. Now, we're no longer going to use coal. We also need to water cool the actual furnace itself. Um, so it's a little bit of a change. Uh, again, we're going to upgrade this in situ. Uh, I don't need to change the front end. The front end is done. The front end is great. We're just going to be upgrading the actual Arc Furnace itself. But it does mean that, um, yeah, things are going to change slightly. Also, I do want to mention this in Arc Furnace Mark II, because the Arc Furnace Mark I doesn't actually smelt iron or copper or anything except quartz. So we're going to go straight to a Mark II. Uh, we need to turn on the recipes, and we need to get in water and also get low-pressure steam out. Uh, also, we might notice we no longer have coal. So if we're going to spin around the back, very first thing I need to do is I need to remove the coal belt. Uh, we're no longer going to be using the coal belt, which also means I'm no longer using the coal input belt either. Okay, so it's going to be a small little change we need to do. At the same time, uh, we might notice that our limestone belt now doesn't plug into the machine anymore because, well, limestone got moved. So we're going to plug that in there instead. We just need to move things over by a tile. That's all it really comes down to, which means you get to go away. Uh, cool. And we'll get to the other one in a second. Uh, can I remove you, please? All right, so that means we can bring in our iron ore. We can bring in our limestone and plug those two together because they are unchanged. The things that have changed is now rather than having on a U-shaped belt, we need a flat belt, which means I need to run a flat belt through where the coal belt used to be and then plug that in underneath where we put our little slag connector. Okay, so that's going to be one of the changes we need to do to get uh, graphite into the system. And again, we're going to use three graphite compared to, uh, where were we, uh, 15 coal. Now, funny thing is the 15 coal represents potentially a lot of power. We could be burning that in a boiler to create steam. Steam then creates power. Uh, this is graphite. Graphite doesn't create power. What this does do is it does use a lot of power, 1.4 megawatts worth of power. Technically, we, we save enough coal um, if we magic graphite out of thin air to then burn for power to then 
make sure that we have enough power to run this machine because like i said they're not cheap to run but it, 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 it's a good upgrade it's a very good upgrade uh and it's one that i highly recommend because it also produces a whole lot less exhaust which means you can run a whole lot more machines on the exhaust scrubbing system uh also no it costs the same amount of people yeah yeah it's mainly the coal saving massive coal saving anyway with that done uh next thing we need to do, do, talk about is we need to get in the water cooling so we need to bring in uh water and we also need to take out steam. So we're going to bring in the water over here. We're going to come up to height two and run the water pipe across the back, hard up against the machines. And then across the front, we're going to again height two uh, and run this right across the front. Okay, with the two pipes in, we're going to take our little pipe. Uh, and because it's height two, we're going to move across two tiles. Okay, and from the front, again, we're going to take the steam. And because it's two tiles, we're going to move our two tiles up. We're going to run across two tiles. And then I just need to do something with the steam, which in my case is probably the worst thing in the world. Just run it through a low pressure turbine. And we're done. So with that done, and that built, and that built, and that built, uh, helps if I probably are plugged in the other belts. Did I build you? I, 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 I. No, we didn't move you. Okay. So I need to move that. Cool. I need to grab a pipe from here and plug that into there, uh, which is going to be facing the wrong way, but we'll toggle the direction because that would probably help. Uh, also need to grab a pipe from what would be this tile and plug it into oh, that tile. And uh, with that being removed and limestone plugged in there instead. And then... Oh, well, it's not fully removed yet. And you're underneath the slag connector will be our flat belt. And with those done here, there, there, and there, I should be able to upgrade you in situ. And providing I've done this right, everything should just magically work, which means this is the point I'm going to say, hey, we've gone through the different options. We've, we've gone through a whole bunch of upgrades. Do I deserve that like? You know, have, have I shown you something that is upgradable that you think you might actually use with the right spacing that in theory you can upgrade from the very very dirtiest smelter all the way up to a final late game smelter and everything just magically connects because the water's connected the steam is connected the steam is outputting into a low pressure turbine it's in theory running a power generator occasionally yeah not very often um but in theory it's working and yes we have gone from our very very basic smelter our very basic smelter that had truck deliveries up to a slightly better version which was now running with belts into an even better version that was running with recyclables hooked up to into a blast furnace mark 2 which just required us add an extra belt in that was the only addition there uh into our exhaust scrubbing version which just means we took out the two smokestacks plugged in the pipe instead and then we could create clean air clean air for all the happy people why are you not running oh you full up in slag that's why um finally into our latest edition our latest rendition of the arc furnace 2 which does create some low pressure steam which you might be thinking to me hey jd i could turn that low pressure steam into power just like you have and i can say yes you could yes you could uh to get enough power to run a power generating mark 2 you need three megawatts worth of mechanical power so if you run a low pressure two uh, low pressure turbine mark 2 with a low pressure turbine mark 1 you can get you can get three megawatts worth of mechanical power which then you can plug into one of these guys and run this non-stop creating 2.5 megawatts worth of real power except you need to have 12 of the arc furnace mark twos running non-stop which is going to cost you 16 megawatts in power to make 2.5 back for free yeah yeah you find something else to do with the steam i do not recommend power maybe just cooling towers maybe desalinators i don't know but this is where we're going to be leaving this particular video uh this covers our iron from early game the stone age well the truck age all the way up to the arc furnace age requiring our terror our, our massive electricity consumption also teraflops and teraflops worth of computing power to have up and running but this will cover us everything from early game up uh, late game with all upgrades in situ now like i said i really like to have that like permanently at the same time i like to remind you guys consider clicking the subscribe button because this is just the first video next video we're going to be covering is going to be steel which is already laid out 
I just need to go through the video with you, which you should click subscribe if you haven't already, because um, we'll be doing that in the not too distant future. But with all that said, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the very next video. Bye.